The disabled husband went up and felt his wife's body. He said he wanted to examine his wife's body. The wife did not want to be humiliated by this humiliation and backed away in panic. Unbeknownst to them, a police officer was watching the scene from outside the house. Keo and her husband Tagawa have lived in this town for many years. Tagawa was captured on their wedding day and taken to war. When he returned, the lower part of his body was completely destroyed. He has been unable to have sex for work since then. He has to rely on Keo to weave silk to keep him alive. But his physical disability was followed by psychological problems. Tagawa, for example, always thinks that the beautiful Keo has a lover outside. He would humiliate his wife when he saw a man hanging around his house. Keo was already lonely and was bullied by Tagawa. She feels that she has to suffer. Police officers Hashimoto sees all this. He had long coveted this beautiful woman. So he finds Keo when her husband is not at home and expresses his affection for her. Keo was already lonely. She was compelled by the men to have sex with him. And so Pandora's box was opened. Gossip spreads fast in this town. Keo's husband soon finds out she's cheating on him. He came home and beat his wife up with a cane. Keo couldn't take it anymore. At Hashimoto's prompting, she takes out a packet of powder and melts it into the water while pouring it for Tagawa. Then she brought water to Tagawa, and so her husband died. Keo falsely claimed that Tagawa died of a stroke. No one in the town suspected this. Soon after, Hashimoto quit her job as a police officer and moved into Keo's house. The following spring, Hashimoto persuaded Keo to pay for him to go to Kyoto for night school, thinking that they had a bright future together. However, when he returns to the town, he brings back a young girl, Sachiko. Keo's smite disappears. When she hears Hashimoto call her sister, she shows a look of disbelief. At night, Keo is knitting with a cold expression. Hashimoto walks up and says he will marry Sachiko. Keo was older than him and there were rumors in town, although he loved Keo more, but the two of them can't be together openly, only in private. Keo heard what he was saying, but of course she didn't agree. Hashimoto didn't try to persuade him anymore. Knowing Keo's weakness, he threatened her to pay him a breakup fee. Sachiko heard this upstairs and was disappointed in this man. Hashimoto sweet-talked Sachiko again. He says that Keo is just a moneymaker for him. Sachiko doesn't believe him. Sachiko doesn't believe him because he has cheated her out of all the money she has earned over the years. But at this time, Hashimoto is very arrogant and says he has no money. It's a kind of fate that two women meet the same scum. Keo and Sachiko also become good friends because they share the same illness. Sachiko quit his job in Tokyo and moved with Keo to a small town where the spa industry is the main business. There Keo used the rest of the money to rent a store and continue her spinning business. The lively and fashionable Sachiko becomes a geisha. Tagawa's best friend, the sheriff, comes to ask about Keo's husband's death. Then he asks Sachiko again, but how would Sachiko know what happened to Keo before? The two women were soaking in the hot spring. Suddenly there was a movement next to them. Sachiko looked up and saw a ragged figure sitting on a rock. Sachiko scolded him not to peek. Keo smiles gently and says she knows this man. He was Haruka, a part-time worker in town. Haruka is not very respectable, but he has always liked Keo very much. He was willing to do anything for her. He was working as a security guard when Keo was in the hot spring. Keo knitted a glove for him the other day. He wears it every day. At that moment, another man came here. Haruko grabbed him and never let go. Keo and Sachiko heard the commotion and hurriedly put on their clothes. Sachiko recognized him as her boss, Fukumi. She thinks he's here to spy on her and Keo. The boss hurriedly explains that he is working. He suddenly has a new idea after seeing Keo next to Sachiko. The next day Fukumi hired a photographer from Kyoto to take Sachiko's promotional photos for the restaurant. Fukumi took Keo to the lobby of the restaurant and wanted her to move to the restaurant. The traditional weaving method itself is an ancient art performance. It will attract more customers to the restaurant. It didn't intend to charge Keo rent either. After all, it's a mutually beneficial partnership. Keo thought it was a good deal, so she moved to Fukumi's place to spin. But within a few days, Fukumi's wife returned from the hospital. There was a beautiful woman in the lobby. The boss's wife immediately guessed what Fukumi was thinking. She caught Keo and beat her up. Luckily, Haruko rushed out to protect him in the middle of the fight and did not make a big mistake that could not be undone. Keo went home to recuperate from the broken head. She doesn't want to go back to the restaurant either. Fukumi came to apologize to Keo. He was willing to pay for all the medical expenses and to pay for the condolences. He just asked Keo to go back to the restaurant and promise that what happened today won't happen again. 
he promised to send his wife back to the hospital. In fact, he was suffering in this marriage. His wife had been chosen by his parents and had been suffering from mental illness. Fukumi's tears fall when he thinks about the past. Keo agrees to go back to the restaurant hall. Fukumi lures his wife to the hospital again. Sachiko is still working as a geisha in the tavern. Until one day Hashimoto came to the geisha's house and approached her. He found the place. According to the advertisement of the restaurant, he shot before. Then Hashimoto found Keo. Keo's fear was awakened by this man. Hashimoto is about to harass her when Fukumi stops him. When Fukumi heard about their relationship, he pulled Hashimoto aside and tells him to disappear from Keo's press forever. He promises to give Hashimoto a thank you gift. Hashimoto was reluctant to give up this moneymaker. But when he looked at the 2 million yen on the table, he wrote a promise. Keo then moved into the restaurant for safety. Sachiko saw what the boss did and thought he was a good man. She said good things about him in front of Keo. She also said that Keo would be the owner of the restaurant in the future. Keo told her to keep her mouth shut. After all, Fukumi has a wife. At night, Fukumi asked Keo to sit in the boss's seat and said it was very appropriate for her to sit here. But Keo felt bad about it. She tries to get up, but Fukumi raises his hand to silence her. Fukumi wanted Keo to sit here forever. He will divorce his wife. Fukumi then sneaked up on Haruka and whispered to him. Haruka says he knows and will work hard. Then Haruka came to Keo's house. It was cold and Keo gave him a scarf by hand. Haruka was very grateful to her and said that everyone thought he was a fool. Keo was the only one who was willing to be nice to him. He asked Keo if she could become a hotel owner. Will she be happy then? Keo chooses to remain silent. The next day the owner's wife falls off the train into a valley while riding home. No one knows if it was an accident or a murder. Keo finds Haruka and asks him about the death of the boss's wife. Haruka didn't admit that he had gone outside. Keo didn't dare to ask any more questions when they saw him like this. Soon after, Fukumi married Keo. It was a snowy day when they got married. Keo was very beautiful in white kimono. Haruka was happy to see Keo rolling in the snow. But the good times didn't last long. One day Hashimoto came to the town to see Sachiko again. He had finished gambling the 2 million she had given him. This time he came back to marry Sachiko and join the restaurant. And blackmail Keo again. After all, no one knows better than him that Keo killed her first husband. Sachiko tried to push Keo off the train when Hashimoto wasn't looking so that Keo wouldn't be threatened anymore. However, she pushed her hard and fell off herself. Keo saw Sachiko's tragic condition and knew that Hashimoto had something to do with it. So she tried to find him, but Fukumi didn't want to. He said Keo could go to Hashimoto, but after she goes, she must not come back. Keo knew what he meant, but nothing is more important now than finding out how Sachiko died. Keo went to the train ticket counter, but the train had been suspended due to heavy snowfall. At that moment, Fukumi arrives and takes Keo back by force. He knew that if this chain of events was investigated, the fact that he wanted Haruka to kill his ex-wife would also be revealed. So he told Keo to forget about the past and live his life now. He says that if Keo can't forget, he should become a mute. Keo was shocked. She didn't expect this man to say such things. It turns out that Fukumi always thought Keo was just a beautiful toy. He doesn't need Keo to have her own thoughts. All he needed was for her to be good and quiet. The less people know about Fukumi's wife's car crash, the better. It's better that no one but Fukumi will ever know. Fukumi sees Haruka sitting outside the window and beckons him in. He praised Haruka for the good job he did in killing his wife. So he wants to give Haruka a reward. He knows that Haruka likes Keo a lot. So he planned to give Keo to Haruka to play with. At this moment Keo is sleeping in the room. This dirty man gently touches the woman's face. This is the one he has been secretly in love with for a long time. This is the most intimate touch they've ever had. But in the end, he didn't continue to touch her. Suddenly Fukumi rushed in and strangled him tightly. It turns out that his reward was a fake. Fukumi said he would give Keo to Haruka, but he was actually trying to silence Haruka for good. Keo wakes up to the sound of the fight. She saw this scene and instead of helping her husband, she killed him with Haruka. This was the second time she killed her husband. Keo's hands were shaking as she squeezed the iron bar tightly. Afterwards, Haruka carried Keo on his back and ran through the snowy night. The two of them went to the hot spring and built a fire. Haruka carefully wiped Keo's blood from his body. Keo realizes that Haruka is the best person in the world for her. Keo told him to run away and said that she was a filthy, vicious woman. She is not worthy of him. But Haruka said that Keo was as pure and beautiful as snow. The two desperate people hugged each other and cried. In the early morning, the police arrived at the scene. 
Haruka Okiri Kiyowon is back over the snowy mountain. They played happily in the snow and had a snowball fight, enjoying the last bit of happiness. They didn't know where they were going. They only remembered that the rainbow at the top of the snowy mountain was so beautiful that it brought tears to their eyes. Finally, they went to the ticket counter at the train station. Keo said to the ticket counter, Please give me the tickets. At that moment, the police suddenly right here. Haruka is no match for a group of police officers, even if he can fight. The sheriff handcuffed Keo and asked her where she wanted to go. Keo said she wanted to go to heaven. Both of them are arrested. In the interrogation room, the sheriff wonders why Keo killed her to husbands. Keo said maybe because she was desperate for love and her two husbands were just toys who treated her like a moneymaker and had no feelings for each other. In the end, Keo and Haruka were both sentenced to death. Hashimoto was also arrested after the police found Sachiko's scarf. Hashimoto was sentenced to six years in prison for manslaughter. On the day of execution, Keo borrowed lipstick from the police and painted her lips red. She didn't say another word. She just asked the sheriff if she looked pretty today. After she received a satisfactory answer, she went to her death. It's a good thing Kale wasn't alone on the train to heaven. Marriage is a walled city. When a man wants to escape, he will find another place to stay. They either try their best or sneak around. And women can only hold back and be silent. Women in those days, if they made one mistake, it could be the end of the world. Kale spent his life pursuing the most pure and innocent love, but from a most dirty and foolish people. In the end, the two of them stripped away their earthly trappings and embraced with a steaming heart. They feel the warmest happiness at the edge of death.